We are so excited to be kind of back. Um, you know, it's kind of been crazy here lately, and uh, so we're just excited to be able to spend some time with you, and uh, hope you guys enjoy the music, and uh, see ya. Yeah. 
Father, God, um, how incredible it is to be back here in your house. Uh, God, we love you so much. Uh, even with everything that's going on, um, this is the time that we need to look to you for guidance, for support, for love, for every question that needs answered. God, we need you. Amen. Come back. 
Good morning, Compass family, and happy Sabbath. What a blessing it was to have music this morning. I'd forgotten how wonderful that was. So James and John and Sarah and Kip and Lisa, thank you so much for the music. And Jeff, it's so good to see you back there again. And Larry, that's just awesome. So good to see you guys this morning. I am so grateful for the Sabbath. You know, I can't imagine how people cope, especially during stressful times, without having God's gift to us in the form of a day of rest. It's been an interesting week, one full of challenges that, if we're not careful, could divide us rather than unite us. There are three things that are impacting us as a Compass family, maybe more, but three that I would like to talk about this morning that could potentially cause significant division among us. I'd like to briefly discuss each of these and suggest a way forward that might help keep us unified even during these challenging times. Challenge number one, across the country, over the past few weeks, seeing unarmed black men and women being killed by the law enforcement community has certainly raised the sad awareness that we still have a lot of work to do in the area of race relations in our country. Growing up just outside of Washington, D.C., I attended elementary school through high school in the era of integration and busing. And what that meant is that I didn't necessarily attend the school that was closest to my home. Rather, I was intentionally bused to various places, various schools, close by but not necessarily the closest, to gain a diversity of race and backgrounds in attendance at each school. One of the goals of integration was for us kids to become friends with people of different cultures. For me, looking back, I would have to consider that a success. My close friends at school included several ethnic backgrounds, such as African American, Indian, and Greek. My friends were also from a diverse religious background, including Jews, Catholics, and other Christian religions. My close friends included names such as Curtis Sher, Ravi Yalamanchillo, John Serlamitsos, and Tyree Hill. Not, can be, not to be confused with Tyreek Hill of Kansas City fame, even though Tyree Hill was the fastest guy in the school. However, after moving to Northwest Arkansas in my early 20s, I all, all but said goodbye to people from Greece, India, the African-American community, at least in the Gentry Salem Springs area. But those were traded for the opportunity to practice great race relations with people still different from me, Native Americans, Hispanics, Laotians, and more and more the Indian population is increasing in Northwest Arkansas. With that in mind, I'm reminded of the story of the woman at the well and Jesus, so well told by the movie Chosen. I want to put in a shameless plug for the movie Chosen, if some of you have not yet chosen to see it yet, but it's awesome. So my wife Kay was telling me about that, and I guess Matt told Kay about it, and so we have become strong advocates for Chosen. It is such a wonderful, uh, they've done such a wonderful job depicting the ministry of Jesus. And in this particular depiction of the story of the well, the, off, the authors show Jesus and his disciples on a journey, of course, by foot. And Samaria happens to be in their path. And so the disciples try to talk Jesus out of going through Samaria, and they plot the course around Samaria to the, to the place that they were intending to go. And Jesus says, why are you doing that? He says, well, we're, we don't want to go through Samaria. He says, oh, we're going right through Samaria. He goes, oh, no, Jesus, you don't understand. Jesus says, oh, no, you don't understand. So they went through Samaria, stopping at a well. Jesus asked his disciples to go find food. 
So Jesus is at the well by himself. And while he is there, in the middle of the day, a woman comes. A woman comes to get water from the well. Very unusual for someone to come in the middle of the day. But it was a woman, a Samaritan woman. And so Jesus, very out of character for people of his day, for Jews of his day, began a conversation with a Samaritan woman. They begin to talk a little bit. He first asks her for a glass of water, a jar of water. So that begins the discussion about why he is even talking to her. And that began a discussion about religious beliefs. And finally, in, in an apparent giving up, the Samaritan woman says, well, I guess we'll just have to wait till the Messiah comes to help us answer these questions. And Jesus looks at her and says, I am he. I am the one you're waiting for. Of course, she is shocked. And then Jesus confesses to her, I haven't told anybody else that yet. And it's kind of funny in the movie. You have to see it. But he tells her, he says, hey, you're my first. She says, you haven't told anybody else that you're the Messiah? He says, no, you're the first. How am I doing? It's a really neat depiction of that story. But think about it. The first announcement that Jesus chooses to make that he is the Messiah is to a Samaritan, a Samaritan woman. Clearly, Jesus is making a statement. Red, brown, yellow, black, and white, all are precious in his sight. As we see and hear the daily news in regard to race, riots, we may be tempted to think that this doesn't have anything to do with us. But maybe, just maybe, it might be a good time for all of us to ask the question, how am I doing in this area? How are my relationships with people who look different, talk different, act different, and maybe even think differently than I do? Is each person precious in my sight? The news media is having a daily dilemma, trying to decide whether race relation protests and riots or the pandemic should be the top story. At the same time, protests and riots are popping up all over the country. The pandemic continues, which is challenge number two. The coronavirus pandemic. In some parts of the country, the curve of new positive cases is flattening or even coming down. But in others, it continues to rise. In northwest Arkansas, the curve of new positive cases is increasing, as are the number of deaths relating to the virus. However, the world, the country, and even Arkansas continues begins and, and is continuing to emerge and open back up the economy. And now that rain raises all kinds of questions, which if not careful, once again, could divide us. Is the virus really dangerous or not? Are we going too slow or are we going too fast? Should we social distance? Or should we not social distance? Should we wear a mask? Should we not wear a mask? When the vaccine becomes available, should we take the vaccine? Should we not take the vaccine? Why are we not opening church up so that everybody can come and attend? Or why would we be crazy enough to open church up? As these issues come more and more to the forefront, the opportunity for division also increases. The first two challenges, all of us are affected by those. The third challenge is specific to us at Compass. And that has to do with our Compass Worship Center space. For some, now, for some time now, it appears that God has been suggesting to us that once again, it may be time for us to move. We know that we've been challenged with worship space Oftentimes, we don't have enough room for an additional family to fit in. We've also been challenged with kid space and with bathrooms. Two other things are now coming into play. 
The first, we have been presented with an opportunity to potentially own our own property that would solve all three of our space issues and still keeping our cash flow very close to where it is today. The second issue that's coming into play is that our landlord would like to use this building for another purpose. And even though he is not yet asking us to leave, I believe that day will come. And so we are challenged with what to do. I love our Compass Core team. There are no two of us on that team alike. Some may see this as a challenge, but we see it as a welcome opportunity. The chance to make sure that we are not missing something, that we are considering all issues, all that we are considering the issues from all the angles. There have been countless times that because of our diversity, we have been able to make significantly better decisions than we could possibly have made if we were all thinking and saying the same thing. There's a huge difference between diversity of opinions, which is necessary in a healthy decision-making process, and division, which is harmful to any organization. And we are seeing this healthy diversity of opinions play out as we consider a course forward in dealing with our worship venue challenge. And so this morning, we have three challenges facing us. Race relations, the pandemic, worship space, three opportunities for potential division, but also three opportunities for a diversity of opinions to come together in unity to forward the kingdom of God on earth. What makes the difference which way it will play out? Once again, I would like to refer back to Paul's letter to the Ephesians that I shared two weeks ago. Ephesians 4, verses 1 to 6. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. I love this saying, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. In other words, let's make sure we're keeping our eye on the ball, keep our focus where it should be. And where is that? Verse 5 tells us, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one Father. That's the thing that unifies us amidst a diversity of opinions about all others. And verse 3 tells us that we need to be making every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. And so as we move through these challenging times together, I would invite you to please continue to pray that God's will will be done in our country and in our church as we rise to meet the challenges of every day.
Father, we are grateful that you invite us to come into your presence. And Father, as we do that today, may we recognize our need of you, that we need you every hour, that as we face life's challenges, big or small, that by coming into your presence and acknowledging our need of you, that you have promised to be there for us and to help us out of every difficulty. Father, may we always remain in your presence, not just on this Sabbath day, but each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming.